Three, two, one, action. My name is Curtis Ryan Woodside. I'm a filmmaker and Egyptologist from South Africa. I will be making my move to Italy permanent, where I will be living with Filippo, after more than a year and a half of not being able to get back. Gigi Lamoroso. I have visited Tuscany a couple times before, but this time it's a little different. Now it's about settling in. So come with me on something that I don't usually do, a vlog, and see what we get up to almost every week. Hi everyone, today I'm going to be making a recipe that I've based off of Nigella's. It is for gingerbread, more like ginger cake actually than gingerbread biscuits. Um, so the, the reason why I've had to adapt this recipe is living in Italy, it's great, but it can be hell to find certain ingredients. Like to find black treacle, you cannot for the love of anything find black treacle in Italy. And I'm not going to spend 45 euros on Amazon to get black treacle delivered here. So I have made my own black treacle recipe, which I will show you now. And apart from the black treacle that I couldn't find, I could not find golden syrup at all. So I had to make my own. I had the opportunity to rather use maple syrup, but it doesn't have the same taste, I feel. This is a fairly easy recipe, um, and actually it's a vegan recipe, so it's something quite nice to make that anybody can really eat. Also, what Nigella usually uses, she uses prunes, but uh, in this case, I'm gonna be using dates. Um, I prefer dates to prunes. I feel they just have a more caramelly taste, and of course, you know, Egyptian dates you can't go wrong with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my dates Nigella actually says use like 70 grams of prunes. However, I am going to use 100 grams of dates. On this recipe, I'm going a little bit more out there with the flavors than Nigella's. I love Nigella, but uh, I have had this before. My mom has made it and my mom actually included a lot more spice and I felt it could use even more. So in this recipe where we're using dates instead of prunes, I am going to be 
adding extra spice. So, you know, it's not far off from what Nigella says. I have heard Nigella say when using ginger, do not use it sparingly. So, uh, and she has actually said at one point, use double the amount of ginger or spice that you feel like. So that is what I am doing today, but it is such a great recipe. It's so simple. The only thing that takes time is the preparation time. So you just got to chop your dates and then there's a lot of spices that we put in as well as freshly ground ginger. Now with the spices that we're putting in, Nigella has said that you should use all spice. Now again in Italy you cannot find a lot of spices just because it's not something that the people use here. They use more herbs and things like that. So spices that are imported, unless you go to a really speciality shop and you pay extreme prices, you cannot find these specialized things. So I checked what all spice is made out of and it's actually made out of cloves, cinnamon and nutmeg. And the recipe actually calls for cloves and cinnamon but doesn't call for nutmeg. So I've just doubled the amount of cloves doubled the amount of cinnamon and I have just got some fresh nutmeg that we will grate into our mixture. Don't you just love dates? <laughs> I mean they are very sticky to chop up but the flavor, I mean you can just eat these like that. They have such a sweet succulent taste like like healthy caramel. That's how I see it. Um, so yeah, actually when I was coming to Italy now on the plane, it was just before Ramadan. And when one of the guys on the plane heard that I was an Egyptologist um, and that I'd been to Egypt before, he took out this bag of dates and we ended up eating dates on the plane. So yeah, instead of snakes on the plane, we had dates on the plane. Um, so once these are all chopped up, I don't want them to be too fine. I don't want to lose my dates within this mixture because I want to bite through and get a nice mouthful of dates, you know, just have a nice bite of dates within the gingerbread. It doesn't detract from the ginger flavor. In fact, I find it helps instead of prunes or uh, raisins. So when we add this to our pan, not on yet of course, then we're going to take our ginger. Now Nigella calls for 30 grams of grated fresh ginger. I'm using 100 grams. I know you might be screaming at the screen right now and saying what are you doing Curtis? But that's how I'm doing it. I want a kick of ginger in here. If you want it more mild, please go ahead, do it more mild. But I like spice and I like kick. So we're going to grate the ginger in. And you've noticed, of course, that I have left the skin on the ginger. All I've done is I've washed the ginger and now I'm just going to grate it. I don't mind the skin. If you want to peel it, please be the patient person and go and peel it. But I have more important things to do in my life than peeling ginger. And there's nothing wrong with a bit of ginger peel. So, so please, if you want to try this recipe, give it a try. Let me know what you think. I personally, I'm not the best cook in the world, but this recipe of Nigella's, I absolutely love, mostly because it's so simple. I probably know why Nigella says use 30 grams of ginger instead of 100 like I'm doing. It's probably just because she got bored of grating it, right? But we have our ginger peeled. This looks like a lot of ginger, but trust me, once it's mixed in with all the spices and the sugar from the molasses, uh, black treacle, um, and the golden syrup, it will balance out quite nicely because you don't want a gingerbread that is actually 
to you don't want a gingerbread that is too sweet so for me this amount of ginger really justifies the sweetness it balances it a bit we can now start assembling our mixture in the pot so i've put it onto a low heat and then we're going to add some beautiful muscovado sugar i just love muscovado sugar to me it's sort of like caramelized sea sand that you can eat um, so we add in our muscovado sugar into the pan onto a low heat just like that now i'm going to add in my homemade black treacle which it doesn't have the right thickness it's a little too runny for me uh, but it has the right taste it has that bittersweet taste i mean if you cannot find black treacle i feel that this is a good substitute for that dark mix of sugar and and uh, sour and then i'm going to add in our golden syrup that we also made because we didn't have other syrup that we could use so we add in our golden syrup you see there's a lot of sweet going in the the, the black treacle um does you know take away a bit of the sweetness but it's still even though it's a sweet-ish thing it still has that bitterness to it which balances out in my opinion okay so now look at this gorgeous pot with these dark ingredients in so we're just going to let this simmer on a low heat just mix everything together and then let it simmer on a low heat for a couple minutes just until everything is nicely combined once we have our mix of our treacle and dates and ginger and the syrup all mixed together now we're going to add our spices now like i said the spices that nigella lists um, are cloves cinnamon ground ginger black pepper which gives it that little kick salt of course just to balance all out the sweetness and she also asks for allspice so i'm going to add in our mix of spices like i said i could not find allspice but we have nutmeg so i'm going to grate in just a little bit of nutmeg not too much because it's the fresh stuff so it's going to be a little stronger we don't want to overpower with that nutmeg but we also don't want to not taste it so there we go nutmeg in okay and the cloves i could not find ground cloves i could only find whole cloves so again um, i've improvised just use a mortar and pestle ground that down as fine as i could and put that into our mix now that we have all of our ingredients coming to a simmer on the stove in our pot we're going to add our vegetable oil to the mix so just add that all in i didn't want to add the vegetable oil at the very beginning because i didn't want to fry my dates and my ginger um, and like i said i'm not the best cook so i was expecting anything to go wrong leave this to simmer for a few minutes and then we're going to add our flour mix it all together we have our ginger potion bubbling away on the stove in its cauldron um, so now i'm going to add our oat milk this is why this is a vegan recipe i'm not a vegan um, but it's quite nice to have something that doesn't have eggs or anything like that in it so we're going to add our oat milk stir as we add it the oat milk is just going to give it a nice creamy consistency and you can already see how the color has changed from that black dark color with the flecks of the ginger in between to now this caramelly color so you see now the it stopped boiling now we're going to add our flour in and we're just going to stir as i add the flour because i don't want to have any lumps
and you'll notice this recipe does have a lot of flour but that's because there's not much of anything else um, in the way of dry ingredients it's a very wet mixture our second batch of flour stir as we go Ooh, I can feel a changing consistency already. Switch the heat off. Take that off the heat now. And like I promised, this recipe comes with a little bit of magic. So what I mean by that is, now we take a little bit of water and mix that into the bicarb. Just stir it with a teaspoon. Can you hear that? That's the magic happening, but that's not all of the magic yet. So once that's all stirred together, we're gonna to add just a little bit of vinegar and the vinegar is what's gonna help this mix to rise. So just don't go too fast. We don't want it to bubble over. Look, I don't, I don't know if you can see this on camera. I'll do it here. Can you see that bubbling effect? Yes, look at that. Whoop. Okay. And we add it all together. You can actually hear the sizzle. I'm just going to mix this all in. Right, so now we have our baking dish, which I've lined with some parchment paper. And I've just cut the ends so that once this is cooked, we can lift it out. So we will take our mix now and just ease it into our dish. The oven is already preheating while I started cooking, so it can go straight in now. Look how gorgeous is that. Just get as much of your mix out as possible. And the thing is, because this has got no eggs or anything like that and it's been cooking away on the stove, you can eat the bowl out when you're finished. So I'm the only one home today. Uh, Filippo is away in Sicily. Uh, but he will be back tomorrow. So that is why I've actually decided to cook this today is because if you let your gingerbread sit for a day or two, the spices and the flavors all meld together so nicely and it really infuses better and it's so much nicer the next day. Trust me. Just level it out in our dish and into the oven it goes. And I'll check back on that in a few minutes. I have 45 minutes to wait until I have to check so just leave me alone while I while I finish this. I would like to give a big thank you to my patrons for not only supporting my Egyptology work, but my filmmaking in general. And thank you to all of you for watching and supporting my videos.